Welcome to Lesson N, the IF statement. Up until now, our programs have executed sequentially, one statement after another statement, in whatever order we wrote them. Although this can be useful at times, there will be some situations in which we want to execute statements conditionally, instead of sequentially. In other words, sometimes we'll skip or repeat some statements. One of the most common ways to do this is with an IF statement. Take a look at this snippet of code from one of our previous lessons. We have a statement that computes a new balance by subtracting the check amount from the current balance. But is that always what we want? Suppose someone tries to write a check for more money than they have in their account. In that case we don't want to subtract the check amount from the balance. Now look at this example. We've inserted a couple of new statements here. We've added an IF statement. If the check amount is greater than or equal to zero, then we'll subtract the check amount from the balance. Else, in other words, the check amount is not greater than or equal to zero, we'll make the new balance equal to the old one without subtracting the check amount. Notice we will either execute the statement right after the word IF or the statement after the word ELSE. Never both of them. Here's another example of an IF statement. Suppose we want to do more than one thing if the check amount is valid, like adjust the balance and write out a message. In Java, the system executes whatever the next statement is following either an IF or an ELSE. But that statement can be a compound statement several statements enclosed in curly braces. So here's the general syntax of the if statement in Java. Write the word if, all lowercase, followed by some condition in parentheses. The condition can be any valid Java expression that evaluates to either true or false. Following the condition, write one statement that should be executed when the condition is true. Remember, if you want more than one statement, you'll have to include them in curly braces, like in our previous example. Following the if statement, we can optionally include the word else, all lowercase, along with one statement, or a compound statement, in curly braces. This statement only gets executed if the condition in the if statement was false. Please pause the video now and answer the question on the screen. When you have your answer, resume the video to check your results. Pause the video now. Welcome back. The correct answer is C. X is 7 and Y is 6. Let's look at the execution. We start off by making x equal to 5 and y equal to 6. Next, we check to see if x is greater than y. Since 5 is not greater than 6, we skip over the if part and execute the statement after the word else, which changes the value of x from 5 to 7. Sometimes we have more than one condition we want to check. For example, in this code snippet, we first check if the check amount is less than or equal to zero. If so, we're going to ignore the check, since you know, a negative check makes no sense. Next, we'll still check to see if the amount is less than the current balance, in which case we'll subtract the amount from the balance. Two if statements, two checks to make. Now take a look at this updated example. It starts out just like the previous one, checking for a zero or a negative check amount. We still have an else statement, but since we can write any valid Java statement we want after the word else, here we've chosen to write another if statement. And of course that if statement can have its own else statement. Take a look at this. If the check amount is less than or equal to zero, we'll set the new balance to the old one. Else, if that wasn't true, 
we'll check to see if we have enough money in our account, and if that's true, we'll adjust the balance. Finally, if neither of those were true, we'll print out an error message. Notice that we can nest as many if statements together as we choose. We can have code that says if condition, else if a second condition, else if a third condition, and so forth, finally ending with an optional else that gets executed only if none of the previous conditions were true. We can nest these as deeply as we would like. Please pause the video now and answer the question on the screen. When you have your answer, resume the video to check it. Please pause the video now. Welcome back. The correct answer is C. Y is 35. Y starts out with a value of 100, but since X is less than 100, we reset it to x plus 10, or 35, right after that first if statement. Note that we will not even check to see if x is less than 50 in the else if statement. Once we've executed the if portion, we do not also execute the else portion. Oh, a common error to guard against when coding if statements is extraneous semicolons. Recall that the syntax of an if statement is if condition, statement, then a semicolon. If you put a semicolon after the condition like in this example, you've told the computer to check to see if the check amount is less than the balance, and if it is, execute the statement that consists of absolutely nothing, plus a semicolon. Then you're going to always execute the statement new balance equals balance minus check amount, no matter what happened on the if. That's clearly not what you wanted to have happen here, so watch those extra semicolons. Please pause the video and answer the question on the screen. When you have your answer, resume the video to check. Please pause the video now. Welcome back. The correct answer in this case is D, x equals 12. Notice the extraneous semicolons on both of the if statements. This means that the computer will execute both of those indented statements, adding 2 and then a 5 to the original value of x, making it 5 plus 2 plus another 5, or 12. This concludes our lesson on if statements.